For instance, some of us woke up this morning and we felt defeated. And you sounded like that Rice Krispie uh, cereal that comes on. You know that snap, crackle, and pop. Well, good morning, good morning, and good morning. This is the day that the Lord hath made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. It's Sunday, July the 23rd, and we're excited and delighted about what God is doing in the body of Christ. I'm Pastor Mervyn January, flanked in the spirit by my beautiful bride, First Lady Evangelist Monique January, and we've come to welcome you to yet another live Sunday morning broadcast at Save to Serve Ministries. So welcome to the riveting room of revelation. This is God's business, and we're nothing more than some shepherds. We're nothing more than the managers over God's storehouse. I pray that you are ready to receive a word from the Lord today. We pride ourselves on creating a non-judgmental atmosphere whereby you can learn, praise, and share in the word of the Lord. My beautiful wife, First Lady Evangelist Monique January is coming. She's going to give us our scripture of the day. And then she's going to give us a prayer. We'll have a commercial after that. And the next voice that you will hear will be yours truly as a featured speaker last week at Fellowship Missionary Baptist Church. After that, I will come back for those who are interested in giving their life to the Lord, as well as those who want to enjoy the ministry of giving. So thank you again for joining us. And we count it a blessing that you took time out of your busy schedule to be here with us. God bless you. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Good morning, hallelujah. Welcome to Save to Serve Ministries. How many know God is a good God? Glory Amen. to God. Amen. We thank God for this Sunday morning. We thank God because he woke us up, hallelujah. I know pastor has already established the protocol, what have you, but I just wanted to come up, hallelujah, and just greet you in the name of Jesus. Open up uh, in a, a scripture and in prayer. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So again, thank you for being here. You could have chose any other platform to be on, but you chose Save to Serve Ministries. And for that, we are grateful. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. Amen. I'll be reading from Psalms 27, a very familiar verse, but very timely verse. Glory to God. And Psalms 27 and 1 states, The Lord is the light of my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. The war should rise against me, and this will I be confident. One thing, hallelujah, he said, one thing have I desired of the Lord, hallelujah, that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. May God add a blessing to the reading and the hearer of his word. Praise the Lord. Amen. As we go into prayer, let's just remember to pray one for another. Let's remember to pray for the bereaved families. Glory to God. We see so much death, so much murder going on in this world. But how many know that God is still God? Hallelujah. Amen. God knows what, what's going on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He knows what to do and when to do it. Glory to God. Father God, we just bless you right now for another Sunday, oh God. We thank you, Father God, for just your goodness and your mercy towards us, God. We realize, God, if it had not been for you, we don't know where we would be. So, Lord, we thank you, Lord Jesus. We glorify your name, God. Father God, we pray, oh God, Lord Jesus, even for the situation down in Florida, God, where the governor, God, is trying to erase history of slavery, God. Father God, I just pray, oh God, Lord, that you would have your way and that you would step in and intervene in that situation, oh God. Father God, I pray for uh, Vice President Kamala Harris, who is down there, God, uh, trying to intervene, oh God, and to stop, Lord, this nonsense, oh God. Father God, I pray that you would word her mouth and give her the wisdom and the knowledge that she needs, oh God, to help correct this situation, oh God. <clears throat> 
Father God, I just thank you right now for those who are in the hospital, God. I ask that you would heal their bodies, oh God. I ask that you would look on those, oh God, that are sick and shut in, oh God, that you would raise them up, oh God. So many people want to go to church and can't make it, oh God, because of disabilities, God. But we know that you are able, oh God. Right. We know you're able to raise up, oh Hallelujah. God, the sick. God, Hallelujah. you said we can lay hands on the sick and they shall recover, oh God. So, Father God, I'm praying, I'm asking in your name, oh God, that you would heal and set free, God. Deliver, God. Save our family members, oh God. Reclaim the backsliders, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Bless Pastor January, God, as he brings forth the word, oh God. Anoint him, God, for such a time as this, oh God. Father God, I pray that no one leaves the same way they came this morning, oh God, but that they would have a word from you, God, that would enlighten them, that would encourage them, oh God, and that would strengthen them in the name of Jesus. Father God, we put this uh, service into your hands now, and I give your name glory and praise in Jesus' name. Come on and put your hands together and give God some praise. Hallelujah. God is good, saints. He is worthy of all the praise. Hallelujah. 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 Thank, Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Praise the Lord. And at this time, we're going to go to a commercial. And after that, you will hear from our own Pastor January. God bless you. This is the bottom line. Choosing the wrong partner can ruin your life. My new book is called Finding and Choosing the Right Mate because everybody's looking for love. It's based on my 21 years of marital experience and it's written for three types of people. Number one, those who are looking for marriage as a final destination. Number two, those who were previously married and divorced like myself and you're looking to tie the knot again. And number three, married couples who have found themselves between a rock and a hard place. That's right. This is a free tool based on my 21 years of marital experience. I didn't stutter. It's free, plus shipping and handling. Consider this your 40,000 foot view to help make an informed decision. This is a strategy for relationships based on all of my years of real world experience, where we're going to discuss the 80-20 rule, love languages, his role versus her role, how to fix what's broken, finances, and much much more. I'm going to lay out and hand deliver the perfect strategy to finding your true love, as well as fixing what's currently broken. Until or unless you become a student of your mate, you will not see your happily ever after. So get your copy today at MervinJanuary.org. And all you got to do is fill out the order form and reel it in, reel it in, and reel it in. See you soon. Morning, brother god bless you this morning if i step on your, your shoes today just know that i got big spiritual feet amen everybody amen hallelujah <laughs> hallelujah i got to let him use me the way i was chosen to be used this morning amen amen i'm going to invite your prayerful attention this morning to the 15th chapter of genesis verse number six we're going to read one scripture and then to the book of romans chapter number four we're going to read verse 20 a second scripture as you are gathering that on your electronic device or on your physical Bible, and I'd ask that you would please rest in your feet unless you're incapacitated or holding a baby. <clears throat> We're going to read these two scriptures, and for the purpose of spiritual clarity, I'm going to read out of a couple different versions of the Bible. Genesis 15 and 6, Romans 4 and 20. And as you're finding these scriptures, let me give you a backdrop for this, these two passages. I want to say it basically in one sentence. The literal linchpin of our faith is our ability to believe. The linchpin of our faith to walk into salvation is our ability to believe. Amen? Amen. I want you to think about that today. Genesis chapter number 15, verse 6. King James Version says, And he believed, thank you for the word, in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. The Amplified says, Then Abram believed in, affirmed, trusted in, relied on, remained steadfast to the Lord, and he counted or credited to him as righteousness, doing right in regard to God and man. 
the EXV or expanded Bible version says, and he believed. God declared him set right with God. Let's move over to Romans chapter number four, verse number 20. We're going to read this one verse in three multiple versions. Then we're going to pray and move on. King James, Romans 4 and 20. Romans 4 and 20. King James says, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. The Amplified says, but he did not doubt or waver in unbelief concerning the promise of God, but he grew All right. strong and empowered yes, by yes. faith, giving glory to God. Yeah. The Phillips version of the Bible says, he refused to allow any distrust yeah. of a definite pronouncement of God to make him waver. Yeah. He drew strength from his faith, and while giving the glory to God, remained absolutely convinced that God was able to implement his own promise. This was the faith which was accounted to him for righteousness. My prayer is that God is going to add the blessing for the reading and the hearing of his word this morning. Let us bow our heads for a moment of prayer. Spirit of the living God, first of all, God, we thank you for the privilege of prayer. We honor you today, God, by offering ourselves as a sacrifice to you. We thank you, O oh God, for being a burden bearer. We thank you for being a heart fixer. Lord, we thank you for being a mind regulator. And even as we sit here today, ready to receive your wisdom, we ask that you would open up our hearts, that it might receive your word. Open up our ears, that we can hear with clarity. Let the word go forth today, unhindered and unchecked by any satanic force. Let no flesh have its way today, God. We sit here, Lord, as empty pitchers, standing before a full fountain, ready to receive from you, God. We're asking that you would blow a fresh wind over this house today, and we call it done right now in Jesus' name. Somebody who loves Jesus, shout amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. The grass may wither, the leaves may fall, and the flowers may fade. But the word of our Lord shall stand forever. Ever. I took it upon myself this morning. God bless you, Brother Riggins. I took it upon myself this morning to rely on God to give me a brand new series or a thought idea process this morning. My victory is in the valley. All right. All right. That's our topic for today. Yes. My victory. My victory. Is in the valley. Is in the valley. And then the Holy Ghost said, well, here's your subtopic. <clears throat> Keep believing in God. Even when you can't trace him, because the devil is after your consistency. Let that sit. Keep believing in God. Even when you can't trace him, because the devil is after your consistency. When I look around and I see some of these gray hairs going on in there, I know you've got some consistency. When I see the gray on your beard and the gray on the top of the head, hallelujah, I know that you have, in order to be here right now, you have got to have had at some point up until now some consistency. And you may have been tried, you may have been put into some vulnerable situations, but even though you have been tried, and you have to, some of us have to die our hair, but we're still here. Some of us have been through some breaking moments. But we're still here. I know that you have, over the years, developed inside of you some consistency. All right. That doesn't mean that the devil is not still after it. My wife and I were talking this morning, and she said, and I said to her, I said, you know, we're not passing down salvation. We're not passing it down to the young folks like we used to. You know, pe people don't, don't understand God like we understood God when we were growing up. The little young man who had to get forced to come up here, that used to be me. So I would say, don't mind being forced to come up and work for the Lord because you might end up doing some good work for the Lord. Amen? You might end up actually being saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. Able to tell some feel the Holy Ghost. Able to tell somebody else about the goodness of Jesus. I don't mean being used as a vessel for the Lord. If you find yourself in that place, that's a good place to be. Hallelujah. How many of you agree with me? That's a good place to be. The same place to be is wrapped up, tied up, and tangled up in the will of the Lord. I don't know about you, but I'm feeling 
feeling pretty good right now. Hallelujah. I feel like preaching, and that ain't never good for the devil. Hallelujah. I'm putting him on notice this morning. He's about to go down in the name of Jesus. Have I got a witness today that the enemy is on his way down in Jesus' name? Hallelujah. He's going down in your life. He's going down in your mind. He's going down when it comes to your bank account. I've come to rebuke the devil in the name of Jesus to get his hands off the, the people of God's money. Get his hands off the people of God's relationships. Get his hands off the people of God's future, off of our dreams, off of our hopes, and off of our prayers. Because we want to need everything to receive what God has coming for us. Amen. If you believe that, shout amen right there. With trepidation, I'm going to say this next statement is directly geared towards Fellowship Missionary Baptist Church and your plight to fill your pastoral vacancy. I don't know why God put this on my mind so strong two weeks ago. So strong, God put it on my mind. He said, I want you to go over there and I want you to give them a holy nudge. Hi, Serena. Anybody ever needed some encouragement in the form of a holy nudge? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> if you truly, here it goes. If you truly want to preserve Dr. John Ray Pack's legacy, the time is now. No more waiting around. No more lollygagging. Come on. Come on. No more procrastination. Yeah. The time is now. now. Amen. The Holy Ghost said you need to elect yes, a capable, yes, seasoned, Come on. Come on. and dedicated pastor yes, who meets the biblical qualifications Amen. that is found in the Word of God. Amen. Somebody say, put some word on it. Put some word on it. Titus 1 and 8 says, this person, male or female, it don't matter, this person must be a lover of hospitality, a lover of men and women, sober, just, holy, and a person of self-control. 1 Timothy 3 and 2 says, this person must be watchful. Yeah. Once again, the Bible says this person must be sober. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. A, a, given to good behavior. A steward of hospitality. And suitable as a religious teacher. Yeah. Why did God say that to me? Because in this church, my prayer is is that there would be no divinity, no, excuse me, no, no divination, no dividing, no bickering, no arguments amongst, amongst one another. It's time now more than ever to come together in the name of Jesus. This is the time is now. Now. This is no time for us to be at odds against one another. This is no time to lose your head. Yes, you lost a great man. Yes, the mantle is huge. Yes, maybe nobody can fill his shoes. But guess what? God still loves you enough that he's going to give you the person that he designed to come behind Dr. Pat. To still honor him, to still keep you going, and to go out into those streets and invite somebody in for the purpose of discipleship. I counsel disagreements in the name of Jesus. I counsel arguments in the name of Jesus. I counsel people being at odds with one another in the mighty name of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus over every member in this house today. Over your mindset, I plead the blood of Jesus. Over your heart, I plead the blood of Jesus. Over your physical body, so you can stay around and get the job done. I plead the blood of Jesus. That God is getting ready to do something great in this place. That the hangers are going to have their mouths hanging on the floor because of what God Get to my sermon. Hallelujah. Y'all wearing me out of here. 
Our assignment for today is to show someone that having a relationship with Jesus Christ causes us to have a fighting chance at all times. No matter what's going on. When you got a relationship with Jesus Christ, you got a fighting chance at all times. Amen. Now, I'm talking to somebody today who feels like your last trouble or your current trouble has left you in a spiritual coma. Almost to the place where it has caused you to doubt God. You know he's real. Like the children of Israel, he already brought you through some Red Sea. But you got to the other side of the sea, walking on dry land, and now you got hungry. You didn't know that the manna was coming or when it was coming or if it was coming. But you know that you're hungry. I want to talk to somebody today who's your last problem or your current problem almost got you tainted, jaded in your belief with God. Amen. You still go to church, but you don't praise him like you used to. Amen. You still believe in God, yeah. but you don't worship him Amen. like you used to. Amen. And it has nothing to do with your age. It has everything to do with your experiences. It has everything to do with what you have seen with these two eyes. It has everything to do with what you have heard with your two ears. So the question is, what if what you want for yourself is not what God wants for yourself, for your life, for your church, for your situation? Second question I want you to think about is, have I allowed my spirit filled with the love of God's word to give him something to work with. Amen. Ephesians 3 and 20 says he can do exceeding abundantly above everything we can ever ask or think of according to the power that worketh where? In us. In us. Have I given God enough to work with? That's the question. I can't thank you right now. God's word goes unnoticed <laughs> when everything is going well. People tend to forget who he is. People tend to walk away and turn their backs on him. Yeah. Yet when you find yourself in a valley experience, you remember, oh, I need him like I need oxygen. As much as I need to breathe air, I need the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Your life is just a life until it gets touched by the word of God. Yeah. Your marriage is just another matter. Until it gets touched yeah, glory by to God. the hand of the Lord. Yeah. Your children are just another set of children yeah. until they get touched, touched by the hand of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do I have a witness right there? Amen. If we go long enough without applying the word of the Lord to our lives, we will find ourselves in a wilderness. Yeah. We'll find ourselves in what I call a valley. But let me remind you, somebody say this with me. My victory is in the valley. My victory is in the valley. Let that get in your spirit because you're going to have many more valleys. Mm -hmm. The question is are you going to walk through the valley? Are you going to crawl through the valley? Or is the enemy going to drag you through the valley? My God. Hallelujah. My God. Watch out now. Yes. All right. Some people do believe in God. And they're going through some battles. Yes, there are other people who don't really believe in God, but they pretend to believe in God because they want to keep up appearances. They themselves, too, are also going through a battle. Well, God bless you. We're certainly excited and delighted for those of you who have chosen to join with us today on this particular broadcast. I'm Pastor Mervyn January, Save to Serve Ministries located in Portland, Oregon. You can find us online, of course, at www.savedandserving.org. But before we leave, let's have a quick altar call. And for those who want to be a blessing to this ministry, we want to give you that opportunity. So here's the question of the day. Do you accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior? Why would I even ask that question? Well, because let's put some word on it, and then you'll have a little bit more understanding as to why I pose that question today. 
Romans chapter 10, verse number 9 says it like this. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God have raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Let's think about that. That thou shalt believe, that thou shalt confess. In other words, all you got to do to become a part of what God is asking us to do in salvation, to start this journey, or for some of us to continue this journey, is to surrender, say yes to the Lord. And for those who say, well, I used to be saved. Well, this is called the rededication for you. So here's the big question again. Do you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior? If you do, I want you to repeat this simple little prayer with me. Father in heaven, I believe that Jesus died just for me. I repent of all of my sins. I am now saved in Jesus' name. Amen. If you recited that simple little prayer with me, then your name is now written in the book of life. If you're saying, well, I used to be saved, then that means you just got rededicated. And we want to say to all of you, either welcome home or welcome back home again to the house of God. Amen. Amen. Well, if you're looking for a church home and you want to be a part of this particular ministry, go to our website. Look in the left hand corner of the screen where it says get connected, sign me up. And we want to provide materials and information and relationship, not only with us, but to push a relationship between you and Jesus so that you can get to know him better. We want to be a part of your spiritual journey. And finally, for those who say this ministry has been a blessing and I want to be a blessing back to it, there's multiple ways that you can give because this is good ground. Amen. So it's offering time for those of you who understand that it's time to be blessed. God loves a cheerful giver. You can't give and buy a blessing, but you want to be seen giving. Amen. This is your moment to consecrate your belief in the word today with God. Multiple ways that you can give. Number one, of course, is on our website. And all you have to do is click online giving. And then you have other people say, well, let's do something a little bit more feasible for my technology. <laughs> we have Cash App. You can go to our Cash App cash tag, which is dollar sign STS Ministries. And give to your heart's delight. Amen. You can give now. You can give consistently. You can give continuously or perpetually. Whatever God puts on your heart. Amen. And if you're not able to, always give us a prayer. Because that's something that we can always use. Amen. And we want us to say thank you. I want to pray over everyone who's giving today. Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm asking that you would put your super on top of the natural of everyone who's giving today. And whatever they're seeking from you, God, we're believing and trusting with them that you will do it. And we call it done now in Jesus' name. Somebody say, I receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. God keep you. Thank you again for joining us here at Save to Serve Ministries. A word that needs to be heard. And until we see you again, may the Lord increase your faith and bless you real good. God bless you.